I want to start off the show by talking about something that uh, doesn't seem like it's not directly HVAC related. It has to do with power tools. I do a lot of power tool stuff. For those of you who watch me over on Zach's Tool Shop, I test a lot of power tools. Do the same thing we do with HVAC, just testing tools. How many RPM, how much torque, how fast do they cut, how fast do they drill, all that stuff. But about, I don't know, three or four months ago, maybe, I'm not quite sure if it's that long, but I purchased, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, this is a Hercules Impact Driver model HD81B. It's 12 volts. I have a 4 amp hour battery on it. Uh, it has a little battery charge indicator. This one's 2 out of 3. Looks like I've been using it a little bit today. And at first, I was like, these things suck. They are horrible. They're weak. And keep in mind that before I purchased this thing, this Hercules 12 volt impact driver. I had M12 stuff from Milwaukee and M12 Milwaukee tools, the fuel tools, because there's different levels of tools I found in Milwaukee. In M12, which is their 12 volt tool, they'll have regular tools, then they'll have fuel. It's very, very different going from fuel to the regular tools. The regular tools are just like every day, like their impact driver and drill that are 12 volts aren't nearly as spectacular as their fuel stuff, which can beat a lot of people's 18 and 20 volt tools, which are the same thing. But with the Hercules here, it was pretty daggone weak. I was unimpressed with it. It's a brush tool, doesn't have a brushless motor. This is like the equivalent of an HVAC guy going from a PSC motor to an ECM motor, that same mentality. With the brushed motors, you know, they're less efficient, they're bigger tools, they're not as powerful and all that stuff. But this one was, I, I didn't think it was very powerful at all. I did some testing. It didn't show that it has much power. You can watch that on the tools channel. This impact driver, I think, was it's less than 100 foot-pounds of torque because that puts it in over 1,000. It was less than 1,000. I think it came out like six or 700 inch-pounds of torque. I should say that, inch-pounds of torque, which is minuscule when you have something like a flex impact driver 24 volt impact driver that gets over 2,500 inch pounds of torque. So I was like, oh, this thing's awful. This thing is horrible. But especially over the last few weeks, I've come to realize something. As I've been kind of remodeling in here and setting things up so I can work out of here a little bit more, I've noticed that I've reached for this tool a whole lot, actually. It's weird because a lot of the time I don't need like the killer power of an M18 because I have the M18 fuel impact driver and it will literally break the socket adapter in half. During one of the tests I did, it snapped the socket adapter in half and I have a feeling that it would do that on a routine occasion if I was testing it a whole lot. And I don't need that much power. It's 2,000 inch pounds of torque or so, I think. And a lot of times, especially as a service tech, I mean, I used the rigid brush drill for years and years and years. It's sitting right over there on the shelf right there. I can see it right now. I've had it for over 10 years. I recently added a 4 amp hour battery to it, mainly because it wouldn't stand up unless you put a 4 amp hour battery on it because the 4 amp hour battery has a big flat bottom and the 2 amp hour is just narrow so it tips over. And it was worth just it being able to stand up on its own. So... I've started to reach for this Hercules, and this makes sense because this goes back to being a service tech. Service techs don't need a huge amount of power out of their impact or drills a lot of the time. It's more important for me, what I found is more important to have a compact drill or impact driver. If you have to pick one, I think you have to go with the drill. Although with this particular Hercules, I'm, I prefer the impact driver. And you can do a lot of drilling with impact drivers now. There are a lot of impact rated like paddle bits and stuff, which I didn't really ever use an impact driver for that. It always seemed unnatural when you tried to drill in a paddle bit with an impact driver because it was just, I felt like it was just, it didn't match up. It, it didn't feel right. But if you have a small 12 volt drill, you can drill out some holes for testing. You can screw in screws on a unit, which is, you know, you be careful when you're doing that anyway because you screw in screws in on a unit, especially with an impact driver. You're going to route out all the screws, especially when you're working with something like, like say, a Goodman unit, which has a propensity for having screws routed out on it. You don't want to go any further in that direction than you have to. It's almost like you should use a nut driver on a unit like that. 
and on a more substantial unit like your trains and stuff like that where the cabinets have a little bit more thickness to the metal you could use one of these weaker impact drivers but you still have to be careful because it's very easy to route those screws out and destroy them so basically what i'm saying is bigger and better isn't always actually better for all applications if you're an installer and you're drilling a bunch of duct together you're putting self tappers into duct work all day long then you probably want something else maybe not m18 i don't really think you need m18 for that either more than likely some moderately powerful uh, i had a makita brushless that was a little bit less powerful than an m18 milwaukee makes a brushless that's in between fuel and their basic stuff that would probably work just fine in fact there's probably a lot of stuff that works just fine you don't have to step it all the way up to that M18 fuel. I purchased a Ryobi Quiet Strike impact driver, which is weaker. It's like these hydraulic impact drivers, if you're familiar with like the Surge from Milwaukee. It's very quiet, though, so that's kind of nice. If you're on a job site, you have to hear the rat-tat-tat-tat of an impact driver all day. It's a little bit annoying. And if you're in close quarters with a lot of metal, it can, it can hurt your ears, to be honest with you. So... It's nice to have something where they take that into account, and it's powerful enough for most things. It's not nearly as powerful as some of these high-end impact drivers that are loud, but it'll get most of those self-tappers in no problem, and you won't have any issues there, and you can save some hearing. So just a little perspective on that. It's kind of something I was thinking about, something I noticed here. You know, you always think you want the biggest and best, but end up reaching for the Hercules a whole lot. And so far, so good. They seem decent, except for, you know, the power. I mean, the build quality is fine. Easy to handle. Fits in the tool bag better. So Can't go wrong with Milwaukee Rigid. There's a lot of 12-volt tools out there. Uh, Makita makes some. I know Bosch makes some. A lot of people make some. Just food for thought there, guys. If you want to watch more videos just like this one, click on this playlist right here. If you want to see our brand new video, click right here. If you want to find out more about the great sponsors that make this show happen, click up here. And to join our email list where I notify you when we're going live, click right here.